Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the new chapter mechanical properties of fluids in physics. So we know that there are three states of matter that is solid, liquid and gases. Here today we are categorizing the liquid and gas under a category called fluid. Now we can define what is a fluid. The substance which flows which flows is called a fluid that is fluid can be defined as substances which can flow that is our liquid and gas comes under the category of fluid now we are going to discuss the importance of studying the mechanical properties of fluid because consider the picture we can say that it is our earth and we know that our earth is enveloped by gases. What are the gases? Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, helium, etc. Okay. So it is essential for living beings. So living things or living being breathe air. So it is important to study the mechanics of air. Okay. Then also we know that the blue portion of the earth is the water. That is two third of the earth surface is comprises of water. And only one by third is the soil. Then we know that the two third of the earth surface. Two third of earth surface is consist of water and all the process all the process in living beings all the process in living beings is mediated by or mediated by fluids that is for example the water we drink and the blood that is flowing through our veins, the air we breathe and uh, that is the oxygen and carbon dioxide etc. comes under what is called fluid. So it is important to study the mechanical properties of fluids. Okay. Now, we are going to discuss some of the properties of fluids. Some of the properties of fluids are, first, it has no definite shape, but it consists of volume of the container. Volume of the container is its volume. That is, if we pour water into a vessel, the water consists of the volume of that container and if we inflate a balloon the air is in the shape of that balloon okay so it has no definite shape but it has the volume of the container okay then we can change the volume we can change the volume by applied force or stress or pressure that is, we can increase, we can uh, blow a balloon into this shape and if we give more pressure into the balloon, its volume becomes large. So, we can change the volume by applying force or stress or pressure. Then, we can know that they offer very little resistance to shear stress. Little resistance to shear stress. Okay, also the shear stress of fluid is million times smaller than that of solids. That is, solid has the uh, highest shearing stress and fluid has the least value of shear stress. Okay. That is the properties of the liquid. That is, they are no definite shape. The, it, its volume is the volume of the container. And we can change the shape by applying stress 
or applying external pressure or then it has little resistance to shear stress thereby shear stress of fluid is million times smaller than that of solids okay these are the main features of the fluids now to study or to understand the mechanics of solids we have to define or we have to study a new physical quantity called the pressure because pressure is most influenced on the fluid that is liquids and gases okay now we are going to study what is pressure consider a cylinder is having a fluid in it it is having a fluid in it now i am placing an object now i am placing a solid object immersed in the liquid we can say that the fluid is at rest fluid is at rest and we have an object immersed in the fluid now we can say that the fluid applies forces into the side of the object okay look at the picture from the side and from the bottom and the top it experiences a force by fluid that is fluid exerts the fluid exerts force on the object force on the object okay and this force is the force is perpendicular perpendicular to the surface and the force is perpendicular to the surface or we so it is called a normal force so it is called a normal force okay these are the main features of the fluid that it exerts pressure or force on the object that is we can say that the average pressure the average pressure applied by the fluid on the object is given as the force per area is given as f by a okay the pressure is a scalar quantity pressure is a scalar quantity that is it is only having magnitude okay then its unit becomes is newton per meter square or it is called pascal or pascal can be represented as pa and the common unit the common unit of pressure is atmosphere we represented it as atm that is what is 1 atm that is atmospheric pressure that is 1 atm can be given as 1.013 into 10 raised to 5 pascal it is the pressure 1 atm 1 atm is the pressure exerted by exerted by the atmosphere at sea level it is the atmospheric pressure okay that is we have say uh, we have defined pressure as force per unit area it is very very important in the mechanics of fluids okay now we are going to the next physical quantity that is the density this density okay in earlier classes we studied what is density density is represented by the letter rho that is rho is equal to mass by volume density is the mass occupied by the object in unit volume that is it can be given as mass by volume its dimension would be m l raised to minus 3 and unit the unit of density is kilogram per meter cube it is also a 
scalar quantity then moving on to the properties of fluids we can say that for liquid for liquid density is constant at all pressure that is liquid doesn't change its mass or a volume under pressure so density is constant so density is constant for liquid at under all pressure then but for gases but for gases density varies with pressure and density varies with pressure okay example the inflation of balloon is an example of that is density varies with that is its volume changes on applying pressure okay so we can say that density is a quantity which is very much important in studying the mechanical properties of fluids now we are going to study the next quantity related to the density called relative called the relative density for that consider the density of water at 4 degrees celsius is given as 1000 kg per meter cube it is a standard unit it's just standard physical quantity that is it is constant so we can define relative density as density of a substance density of a substance divided by density of water at 4 degree celsius it is the relative density here we are comparing the density of a substance with water at 4 degree celsius so it is called the relative it is relation it is a relation connecting the density of the substance to the density of the water so it is called relative density because we are having the density in the numerator and in the denominator we can say that it is dimensionless it is dimensionless it has no unit has no unit now going on to the next topic that is called the pascal's law it is very important in studying the mechanics of fluids okay it is uh, it is a law discovered or postulated by the french scientist blaise pascal before considering the a statement of the pascal's law consider the picture given it is a vessel or a container two openings here we are having two openings then we are placing some fluid in it so maybe it is oil or it is water or something like that it is a fluid this is the first opening and it is having area a1 and this is having area a2 and we are applying a force towards the first area that is it is given by f1 and we can say that it the force will displaces the liquid or fluids into this and it is given by f2 that is the force exerted in the area a2 will be equal to the force f2 that is according to pascal's law the the pressure exerted anywhere in a confined incompressible fluid is transmitted equally in all directions in equally in all directions throughout the the fluid throughout the fluid that is 
the force applied on the first phase is transmitted and equally distributed the into the fluid and it is given by force f2 that is we are if we are taking incompressible fluid that is incompressible means density is a constant density is a constant is constant for incompressible fluid so we can say that according to pascal's law the pressure exerted anywhere in a confined incompressible fluid is transmitted equally in all directions throughout the fluid okay then mathematically we can uh, return as if the f1 is the force applied on the first area that is a1 which is equal to the force on the second area so f by f1 by a1 is equal to f2 by a2 this is the pascal's law this is the pascal's law or we can say that the final force area 2 is that is a2 by a1 into f1 that is f2 is directly proportional to area of the surface and also it is proportional to applied force and it is inversely proportional to the area of the first surface so we can say that uh, when we increase the area of the second surface and if we increase the force of the uh, first surface and if we decrease the area of the second surface there will be a maximum value of force on the second surface okay because of this we can up apply the pascal's law in the following applications that is the applications of pascal's law is comes under operating the hydraulic lift then car lift and jacks then elevators hydraulic brakes in these cases it is we are applying the principle of pascal's law okay this is the Uh, main advantages of using uh, pascal's law in these all these examples we can uh, see something called uh, a fluid in the system sometimes it is water or sometimes it is another fluid okay it is uh, having the property or it is obeying the properties of fluid and it is uh, obeys the laws of pascal's law so moving on to the next topic now we are going to discuss the variation of pressure with depth variation of pressure with depth okay we know that the pressure can be defined as the force per unit area which is the force applied on the object immersed in a fluid so consider a fluid in a container then consider a consider an object having the surface we can the top can be defined as 1 and it is the down portion and we it is having the height h and the and the top of the portion is having pressure p1 and it is having the pressure p2 okay the fluid is at the fluid we are considering is at rest at rest okay then there are forces there are forces on the object that is on the top on the top we can say that it is p1 a1 on the top the force can be defined as p1 a1 it is in the downwards it is in downward the force is applied on the top of the object in downward motion then at the lower most position or in the down point we are having a force p2 into a that is acting that is acting upwards 
it is acting upwards. So, we can say that the change in pressure, the change in pressure is equal to delta P that is equal to, that is equal to P2 minus P1. Okay, now also we know that P into A is the force. P into A is the force. Here we are uh, considering the change in pressure and the, we are having the area A and uh, we are having the force Mg which is the gravitational force acting downwards. Okay. Then we can say that P, delta P can be div, uh, given as P2 minus P1 and into A is equal to Mg. Uh, we know that the density can be defined as mass by volume. Also mass is equal to density into volume and volume is the area into height. Here we can uh, say that the height of the uh, from the point uh, 1 to 2 is h. So, so uh, we are substituting rho a h in the in place of m. That is we can say that p2 minus p1 into a is equal to rho rho a h into g. Cancelling the areas, we get P2 minus P1 is equal to rho G H. That is, we can say that delta P is equal to rho G H. This is the, this is the expression for pressure of an object under a fluid. Or it is the pressure exerted by the fluid on the object when it is immersed under the fluid. Okay, then we can say that the pressure is directly proportional to the density. The pressure is the pressure is directly proportional to rho. It is what is rho? Rho is the mass by volume. That is delta P is directly proportional to mass. It is mass of the object. Okay. Then G is the gravitational constant and H is the height. Now, in uh, here we are consider, considered the case of the object under the water. Now, consider the case of an object. First, the topmost portion is on the atmosphere. It is in the atmospheric pressure and it is under the fluid pressure. Now, the top layer is under atmospheric pressure and the down point is under fluid pressure. So, the total pressure can be defined as the pressure of the atmosphere plus pressure exerted by the fluid. That is, we can say that the total pressure on the object is P is equal to PA plus rho GH. Okay, that is PA is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere. Next, we can say that the P minus PA is equal to rho GH from the above equation. The term P minus PA is called the gauge pressure. Is called the gauge pressure or the excess pressure. It is the excess pressure. It is the variation of pressure with the depth. That is, uh, that is the pressure directly proportional to mass. And the pressure is directly proportional to height. If the height increases, if the height increases, the pressure on the object increases. That is why scuba divers, that is why scuba divers having breathing uh, problem under the uh, water when, when they go to deep into the 
sea level. This is because of the variation of pressure with the depth. Okay.